Hello and welcome to another sunny and hot day in Thailand. Today I'm diverting from my normal electric scooter projects and I'm going to explain why the world of electric vehicles just underwent an earthquake of a change, yet nobody outside the industry even heard about it. It's all about charging. And at the end, I'll tell you a curious tale of trying to upgrade the charging in my own electric scooter. Okay, how do you charge an electric vehicle? It's a question that goes back to the very first electric cars about a hundred years ago. The simple answer is electricity is everywhere. And if there isn't any around you, you can make some yourself. Trust me, it's easier than trying to make your own gasoline. The easiest way to charge is to plug into a wall outlet, known as level one charging. Now, while that plug has enough power to kill you, it doesn't deliver energy very quickly, at about 1.8 kilowatts. Even my electric scooter takes about six hours to get a full charge on that, and it would take two and a half days for a Tesla. Not a very time-efficient solution when we're trying to compete with the speed of a gas pump. But electricity scales very, very well, so let's move up to the power range to the J1772 plug. J1772 is a standardized plug and communication protocol between the electric service device and the vehicle, usually through a small wall-mounted or pedestal unit. Technically, these units aren't chargers because their job is to safely deliver AC power to the vehicle, which then needs its own onboard charger to convert the AC power into DC power and then flow it into the battery. J1772 was the first real standard AC charging plug and commonly delivers 3 to 4 kilowatts but up to 20 kilowatts of AC power. J1772 defined a super simple protocol between the charging unit and the vehicle using a few low voltage levels on a signal wire in the connector. To use J1772 in your vehicle, this AVC2 device is a cheap and simple vehicle side controller. It had a pin that let you know when the charger was plugged in so you could disable putting the car in drive and driving away. It was perfect in the 90s and the aughts for the pioneers who were converting gas cars to electric. Now let's look at high power charging, which is where things get much more complex. When the Nissan LEAF came out in 2010, it used a new high power charging system called Chatamo, which is a Japanese play on words for relax and have a cup of tea. It can deliver up to 50 kilowatts of DC power that goes straight into your battery pack. This gives fast charging times and removes the complexity and cost of a very high power AC charger in the vehicle. Chatamo is currently being upgraded to provide up to 400 kilowatts of DC charging. The problem for home garage converters is that the Chatamo inlet socket needed in your vehicle can cost about $1,000 just for the plug. And then you need a device in your vehicle that talks the Chatamo protocol to the charging unit. The communication protocol is more complicated than J1772 to include transmitting battery parameters like target voltage, total battery capacity, and while charging, it tells the station how to vary the output current, and it can also deliver power from your vehicle back to the grid. You can find some vehicle side Chatamo controllers, but these companies don't like to sell to individuals. So a few hobbyist projects have been launched, including one started by EVTV, but then the problem becomes testing against all Chatamo chargers in the world because they don't all exactly follow the standards documents. As of July 15, 2017, there were over 16,000 Chatamo plugs in the world, but I don't expect this number to grow very fast. Companies using Chatamo include Nissan, Toyota, Mitsubishi, Citroen, Hyundai, Kia, and Peugeot. Note that except for Nissan, this is a pretty small list of small volume EV manufacturers. 
and that's one of the risks of being first in the market. The other major standard that competes with Chatamo is called CCS Combo, or Combined Charging System, which was introduced in 2011. Sadly, the plugs in the protocol show that it was clearly designed by committee. CCS is insanely complicated, taking at least six standards documents just to explain how everything works. The charger to car protocol involves a full software stack with internet-like communication across the wire, and it handles things like secure automated payments for your charging session and smart grid features. As a home converter, just try to implement this one yourself. I dare you. In the US, the plug is an ugly evolution of the J1772 standard to add DC fast charging. And in Europe, the plug is an ugly evolution of the Menicus Type 2 standard to add DC fast charging. Now, the good thing is you can plug in a J1772 or Menicus Type 2 plug for slower AC charging where it's available, or a CCS plug where it's available for fast charging, and they both go into the same socket in the car. Remember that the Nissan Leaf has two different plugs to support AC and DC. CCS can deliver up to 600 kilowatts, which is very, very high, and can compete in time with filling a gasoline car at a gas pump. There is no car on the market yet that can handle that level of power, so each vehicle tells the charger what voltage and current works best for the specifications of the battery pack. There are likely over 10,000 CCS chargers in the world, and that number is growing sharply. CCS is supported by the Audi e-tron, Jaguar I-Pace, Mercedes EQC, Hyundai Kona and Ioniq, Chevy Bolt with a B, Ford Focus, BMW i3, and the VW e-Golf. You can see this is a much more powerful list of companies and the geographies that they cover. Their future models will all be CCS based. Here I have to mention Tesla supercharging because in 2012 it was the first widespread DC fast charging solution, currently running at 120 kilowatts and over 11,000 plugs worldwide. Tesla cars can accept AC or DC through the same small, beautiful plug. Now Tesla also has the downside of a US plug of their own design and a modified Type 2 plug from Menicus for the European cars. Tesla offered the use of its supercharger network to all other EV makers, but nobody took them up on the offer. And of course, the Chinese have their own GB slash T system with separate AC and DC connectors. So, okay, this was the state of play up to last week. What changed? As Tesla prepares to start making deliveries of the Model 3 in Europe, they quietly announced the car would use the CCS connector. BAM! CCS is the winner. Chatamo is dead. You heard it here first. In conjunction with the plug in the car, Tesla announced that they're retrofitting all European superchargers with an additional CCS cable. This means all existing Model S and X cars will use the original cable, and the Model 3 will use the CCS cable but not at the same time, of course. Tesla will also make a CCS adapter for Model S and Model X, giving the driver tremendous flexibility for fast charging at CCS-only stations. So now we have Tesla all on board with CCS for fast DC charging. South Korea has mandated CCS, so Kia and Hyundai will make the switch soon. Porsche is claiming a very high power 800 volt charging system for the upcoming Taycan based on the highest CCS power possible. Now, I've always been concerned about competing standards in every context. Some people say let the market decide, but the market is generally slow and dumb and sometimes the worst thing wins like VHS videotape and Microsoft Windows. We're eight years into fast DC charging now, and I think the market has shown that it's choosing CCS, plus the specialized Tesla superchargers 
but even they're migrating to be more open. Let's see how quickly we can get more CCS charging stations installed around the world. Okay, now on to the bonus story. I've been looking for a faster way to charge my electric scooter's upcoming 4 kilowatt hour lithium battery pack. I have a great 500 watt charger, but it's just too underpowered. It gets really hot and it'll take 8 hours to do the job. So while I was at the electric vehicle show in Bangkok earlier this year, I came across a company called GridWiz, which was selling a vehicle side CCS controller called Apple Mint. Perfect. I can get the connector, wire in an Apple Mint, configure it for my bat battery packs specifications, and I get high power DC charging. I even have free CCS charging station here in my town, so I get fast and free charges. That's a perfect world. Problem was there was nobody in the booth to speak with, so I emailed my request for information and pricing to the company, and I got this strange reply. Dear Mr. Michael Brown, thank you for your interest in our products. Again, it is not an easy work for experienced software developers to build a communication protocol between EV and its charger. Please make sure that you can manage the battery management system in order to work on the integration. Normally, it is not accessible externally. Best regards, Munsu Lee. So I have a few questions about this. Why is he telling me that it's hard to build a communication protocol? That's why I want to buy his product. And why does he care about my battery management system and how I can access it? I'm building everything by myself in the bike. I can tap into anything I need. So I replied back to him that I have a lot of experience having built an electric car the electric scooters in process. I have a master's degree in computer science and I can understand everything I need to know about their product. And I got no response. I sent a follow-up email, no response. So what's the deal? Does this product even exist? They still show it on the website along with the corresponding charger side controller called Peppermint. So my dream of a simple DC fast charge for the scooter is put on hold again. Okay, let me know down in the doodly-doo what your thoughts are on Chatamo, CCS, and Tesla's move into the CCS space. Happy charging! As you stare out on my beach, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel and click like on this video so YouTube thinks I'm worthy again and I have so many people on my channel that they'll give me 10 cents a day in ad revenue. So I thank you for that.